Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Adrenal Gland Cancer Introduction Adrenal gland cancer is a rare cancer that starts in the glands located on top of each kidney. Adrenal glands produce very important hormones that you can't live without. There are different types of adrenal gland cancers. The type depends on where in the adrenal gland the cancer begins. This program focuses on adrenocortical carcinoma, which starts in the outer layer of an adrenal gland. This program will help you better understand what adrenal gland cancer is and what treatment options are available. The adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are located on top of each kidney. Kidneys are organs located in the mid to lower back on both sides of the spine. Each kidney has one adrenal gland which is shaped like a triangle. The adrenal gland makes very important hormones. Some of these hormones include Cortisol, aldosterone, testosterone, estrogen. Cortisol helps the body use glucose, a sugar. It also helps manage the body's use of protein and fat. The hormone aldosterone helps control the balance of water and salt in the body. It also helps keep blood pressure normal. The hormone testosterone causes the body to have male sex characteristics, such as facial hair, deep voice and muscle growth. It is mainly made in the testes, but some is also made in the adrenal gland. The hormone estrogen causes the body to have female sex characteristics, such as growth of breast tissue. It is made both in the adrenal gland and the ovaries. Cancer that begins in the adrenal cortex is called adrenocortical carcinoma. This is the type of cancer covered in this program. Adrenal gland cancer. The body is made up of very small cells. Normal cells in the body grow and die in a controlled way. Sometimes cells keep dividing and growing in an uncontrolled way, causing an abnormal growth called a tumor. If the tumor does not invade nearby tissues and body parts, it is called a benign tumor or non-cancerous growth. Benign tumors are usually not life-threatening. If the tumor invades nearby tissues and body parts, it is called a malignant tumor, or cancer. Cancerous cells spread to different parts of the body through blood vessels and lymph channels. Lymph is a clear fluid produced by the body that drains waste from cells. It travels through special vessels and bean-shaped structures called lymph nodes. Cancer that moves from one tissue to other body parts is known as metastatic cancer. For instance, an adrenal gland tumor may grow through the adrenal gland's outer layer and to nearby tissues over time. Cancers in the body are given names depending on where the cancer started. Cancer that begins in the adrenal gland will always be called adrenal gland cancer even if it spreads to other places. A tumor in the adrenal gland may be functioning or non-functioning. If the tumor is functioning, it is making more hormones than normal. If it is non-functioning, it is not making hormones. The hormones made by functioning tumors may cause symptoms. There are different types of adrenal gland cancer. This program focuses on the most common type of adrenal gland cancer, which is adrenocortical carcinoma. Adrenocortical carcinoma starts in the adrenal cortex, the outer part of the adrenal gland. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Risk factors It is usually impossible to specify the cause of cancer in an individual patient. However, we do know what causes cancer in general. Doctors also know factors that can increase the chances of getting cancer. These are known as risk factors. Having certain genetic conditions increases the risk of developing adrenal cancer. Genetic conditions are caused by defective genes passed on from parent to child. 
They can also be caused by a mutation or change in a certain gene. Lee-Fraumini syndrome is a rare disorder that greatly increases the risk of developing several types of cancer, including adrenal gland cancer. It is caused by a change in a gene that normally controls cell growth. Beckwith-Weidman syndrome also raises the risk of developing certain cancers, including adrenal gland cancer. This syndrome is a rare overgrowth disorder in which babies are large at birth. It can also cause a large tongue, large internal organs, and other problems. Another rare genetic condition that raises the risk for adrenal cancer is Carney complex. Carney complex is marked by dark spots on the skin and tumors in the heart, certain glands such as the adrenal glands, skin, and nerves. Not everybody who has risk factors for adrenal gland cancer develops it. Some people who have no risk factors for adrenal gland cancer can still develop the cancer. Symptoms Common symptoms of adrenal gland cancer include a lump in the abdomen, pain in the abdomen or back. A non-functioning tumor does not produce hormones. These tumors may not cause early symptoms. A functioning tumor makes too much of a certain hormone. Symptoms appear depending on which hormone is being made by the tumor. Too much cortisol can cause a deepening of the voice and swelling of the sex organs or breasts in both males and females, growth of fine hair on the face, upper back, or arms, weight gain in the face, neck, and trunk of the body with thin arms and legs. Symptoms of too much cortisol can also include a lump of fat on the back of the neck, a round, red, full face, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, muscle weakness. Too much aldosterone may cause feeling thirsty, frequent urination, high blood pressure, muscle weakness or cramps. In women, too much testosterone may cause a deepening of the voice, acne, balding, Growth of fine hair on the face, upper back, or arms. No menstrual periods. Men who make too much testosterone do not usually have symptoms. In women, too much estrogen may cause irregular menstrual periods before menopause. Menstrual bleeding after menopause. In men, too much estrogen can cause growth of breast tissue. Impotence. Lower sex drive. These symptoms may not be caused by adrenal gland cancer. Make sure to see a doctor to find out what is causing your symptoms. Diagnosis Your doctor will first ask about your family medical history in addition to your own. A physical exam will be performed. You may also have blood tests or other lab tests to rule out other causes of your symptoms. Urine may be collected for a 24-hour period and then tested. The test measures the amount of cortisol and other substances in the urine. Higher than normal amounts may be a sign of a problem with the adrenal cortex. Dexamethasone suppression tests can also be used to check the adrenal glands. These tests either give a low or high dose of a man-made hormone called dexamethasone. The level of cortisol is then checked from a sample of blood or from urine that is collected for three days. Imaging tests can be used to create pictures of areas inside your body. These pictures can show if a tumor is present. Imaging tests that may be done include CT scan, MRI, PET scan, MIBG scan. Tests may also be done to look at the blood vessels and the flow of blood near the adrenal gland. A contrast dye is injected. As the dye moves through the blood vessels, x-rays are taken to find any blockages. An adrenal angiography looks at the arteries while a venography looks at the veins. A biopsy is often needed to make a diagnosis of adrenal gland cancer. A biopsy is the removal of a sample of cells or tissue. The sample is often removed with a needle. A pathologist will then examine the biopsy sample under a microscope to look for cancer cells. A biopsy is the only sure way to know if cancer cells are present. Staging If you have adrenal gland cancer, your doctor will determine the stage of the cancer. Staging is an attempt to find out if the cancer has spread and, if so, to which parts of the body. 
Stages are usually described using the numbers 1 through 4. A lower number indicates an earlier stage. Staging is helpful in deciding the best course of treatment. When staging adrenal gland cancer, doctors want to find out how large the tumor is, whether the cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes, whether the cancer has spread and, if so, to which parts of the body. If adrenal gland cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes, it can spread to other areas of the body. Adrenal gland cancer commonly spreads to the bones, liver, lungs, and peritoneum, which is the lining of the abdomen. Most tests used to stage adrenal gland cancer are also used in diagnosing it. This section covers additional tests that may be done to stage adrenal gland cancer. A cavagram may be done to look at the inferior vena cava and the flow of blood through it. The inferior vena cava is a large vein that empties into the heart. A contrast dye is injected for this test. Then, x-rays are taken to see if there are any changes to the vein. An ultrasound may also be used to stage adrenal gland cancer. This test uses sound waves bounced off organs and other internal structures to create a picture of the inside of the body. A surgery called adrenalectomy may also be done. An adrenalectomy removes the entire adrenal gland. The other adrenal gland will take over for the one that was removed. A sample is then viewed under a microscope by a pathologist to check for signs of cancer. Treatment and supportive care. The type of treatment used depends on the size and location of the tumor, the stage of the disease, and the health of the patient. Treatment for adrenal gland cancer may include surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or some combination of these treatments. Surgery for adrenal gland cancer often involves removing the affected adrenal gland and some tissue around it. Removing nearby tissue may help prevent the tumor from growing back. The surgeon may also remove some nearby lymph nodes. Radiation therapy is a cancer treatment that uses high-energy x-rays or other types of radiation to kill cancer cells or keep them from growing. The way the radiation therapy is given depends on the type and stage of the cancer being treated. There are two types of radiation therapy. External radiation therapy uses a machine outside the body to send radiation toward the cancer. Internal radiation therapy places needles, seeds, wires or catheters containing small amounts of radiation into or near the cancer. Chemotherapy is a cancer treatment that uses drugs to kill cancer cells. Chemotherapy may be given in the bloodstream through an IV or taken by mouth. It can also be placed in a specific area of the body. The type used depends on the type and stage of the cancer being treated. Radiation therapy and chemotherapy may sometimes be done together. These treatments may be used on their own, before surgery or after surgery. There may also be clinical trials available for people with cancer. Clinical trials test new medical approaches and treatments. Cancer and its treatment can lead to other health problems. It is important to have supportive care before, during, and after cancer treatment. Supportive care is treatment to control symptoms, relieve the side effects of therapy, and help you cope with emotions. Functioning tumors can produce extra hormones and cause symptoms. Mitotain is an anti-cancer drug that can stop the adrenal cortex from making hormones. This can help relieve some symptoms. Supportive care also deals with the pain associated with cancer and its treatments. Your healthcare provider or a pain control specialist can suggest ways to relieve or reduce pain. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Adrenal gland cancers are uncommon. These cancers begin in the adrenal glands, which are located on the top of each kidney. Adrenal glands produce very important hormones that you can't live without. There are different types of adrenal gland cancers. The type depends on where in the adrenal gland the cancer begins. This program focused on adrenal cortical carcinoma, which starts in the outer layer of the adrenal gland called the adrenal cortex. If you have the symptoms of adrenal gland cancer, your doctor will try to find out if cancer is the cause. Various lab and imaging tests may be done to check for signs of cancer and rule out other causes. However, a biopsy is often needed to make a diagnosis of adrenal gland cancer.
Treatments for adrenal gland cancer usually include surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or some combination of these treatments. Adrenal gland cancer is most treatable in its early stages. Research has already led to advances that have helped people live longer. It continues to find better ways to care for people with adrenal gland cancer. Thank you for using Explain.